All right, guys, Ryan McKenzie here. Guys, if you're joining us on Facebook, it's good to have you. Um, we're going live with Matt and Chris Kelly, and I've got some really cool stuff for you guys. These are two brothers who were forced to shut down their gym completely, and now they've got it back up and running completely online, and um, it's pretty awesome. So I want to talk to them about it a little bit, but first, before we get to them, guys, I need to know a couple things from all of you. One, where are you in the world right now? Where are you in the world right now? If you've, if you've watched these live videos before, they're usually in my Facebook group. Uh, we've went live to the, the entire Facebook world since uh, these guys are so special. But um, where are you in the world right now? What part of the world are you in? What's the weather like? I'm in Orlando, Florida, just out of Orlando in Winter Garden. And it is like 75 degrees. It is perfect. It is breezy and sunny and amazing. So you be jealous. And it's all, it's not hot. It's Florida and it's not hot. It's great. Where are you in the world right now? What's the weather like? And two, are you watching this live or are you on a replay watching it later? Cause I want to know if you're watching it later, then maybe I can go live at a time. You Australian people are, are watching it live. And when it's two o'clock in the morning for me, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon for you. Maybe I'll stay up late for you guys one night. Um, let's get to Chris and Matt guys. Introduce yourself. We got, we got the brothers here. Tell everybody who's who. Uh, I'm, I'm Matt Callie, my brother, Chris. Uh, um, we're currently in Ashburnham, Massachusetts. It's, uh, it's windy and it's not hot and it's not cold. We're right in that kind of middle zone. We are actually prescribed to get snow tomorrow and that will be the officially latest snowfall to date. That's not okay, guys. Snow in May is not, a, like you shouldn't, I don't You're know. Telling us. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Um, but that's, hey, at least it doesn't get hot like it does. Like most May, it's raining and 90 degrees here so we're we're in a, a cool time i i got two two quick questions before we dive into the interview guys one for both of you guys what's your favorite cereal if you had to pick one horribly bad just like childhood your you know brings you back kind of cereal what, what would it be and why yeah that's a, that's a no-brainer especially with mother's day coming up uh, frosted flakes with sugar poured all over the top of it like my mom used to serve up so the, the so the 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 frosted flakes with the sugar is not enough. You got to have more on top. That, yeah, Man, it's, I love it. It was a fat-free food, you know. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So this one would definitely, and, and I know you remember this one, Rice Krispies, Rice Krispies with like like three cups of sugar poured on top, and the crinkling of the Rice Krispies with the sugar. My mom like got me to the table quicker than fastest 400 i ever ran so, so mrs cali was really into the sugar cereal i love this is great this is oh, good yeah. stuff. um guys so um which one of you is actually older so i am older chris by five minutes five minutes so we got guys chris and matt twin brothers run a gym together forced to shut everything down we're going to talk to them about how that went um with those whole everything going on but before we do last question what is something weird about, actually, you know, maybe you could answer for each other. What's something weird about you that not a lot of people know about? Uh, I'll answer for myself. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> Jump in quick so he doesn't yeah. have a chance. <laughs> I, I, I use an all natural deodorant. I got a, a girl that works at a farm as a client and she makes my deodorant for me. And that's been a, a, an experiment this year. And uh, yeah, prior to the gym business, we actually uh, ran unofficially a skateboard uh, production company where we were producing producing skateboard videos you're doing skateboard videos the last little bit cut out there um but i think we'll be all right here skateboard videos and now you guys are frozen but you're back okay good so what were the skateboard videos so we before the gym we ran a skateboard production company so we would skateboard film each other jumping down stairs doing all sorts of crazy stuff kind of like uh jackass type stuff I feel like you don't see a lot of skateboard CrossFitters. I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to stereotype, but I feel like those those two genres don't mix a lot. That's pretty wild. Yeah, well, the people that knew me then don't even recognize me now. They don't even know who I am. That's awesome. All right, so um, guys, I've got the chat going right here. So as we're talking to Matt and Chris, um, if you guys are on with us right now, I see a bunch of you guys jumping on. Thanks for being here. Um, throw a question in the comments, and we'll ask them specifically what you want to hear from them about because they're in the middle of this too like a lot of you guys are um a lot of you guys are starting to open back up studio spaces um doing a whole lot of a lot of stuff online or just have no idea what you're doing at all right now just hoping that something will work right so um let's hear from them guys if you could start off just tell us your story tell us a little bit about yourself and we can get into this 
Yeah, we have a really unique facility up here in the Northeast. Uh, we do everything from um, basic group fitness to functional team training to CrossFit training. So our facility is really unique and we were running that full circle um, from standard gym memberships to team training memberships to CrossFit memberships, small group, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that was our specialty, delivering our individualized service in those kinds of settings. We also have a pretty extensive outdoor obstacle course that we have access to as well that is adjacent to the um the gym so like the the possibilities are endless where we're at it's pretty cool i feel like i would live on that thing that's amazing man um how did you guys like your skateboard videos to working out twin brothers like how did you get into the fitness industry in the first place uh we owe that all to our uncle our uncle has been in the fitness industry now almost 40 years uh, he branched out, started the gym, and he actually, I think we were skateboarding down the street one day and said, hey, Unc, heard you're opening the gym. Why, why didn't you tell us about that? And it, and it blossomed from that. He asked, he had us being his little grunts doing work for him. And then before you knew it, we were working behind the desk for him. That's So where did you stay? That's a great, great point. Where did you start when he opened the gym? Front desk. Yeah, front desk. So we were actually, at the time, we were working at McDonald's and he would come into McDonald's a lot and we would make him McFlurries and all that stuff. And and we were really good behind the cash register there. So when we started working with him building stuff at the gym, he was like, you guys would be really good behind the desk, you know? So he brought us in. We were making smoothies for people. I love this so much right now. Yeah, yeah. Setting people up in the tanning bed, answering phones. Uh, and then pretty much it just sort of enveloped from there. No, like this is like, I feel like most people, they're looking for employees. They're trying to find like fitness models on Instagram or they're trying to find... Um, somebody in their gym who looks really good and maybe you guys are in, into working out too but what i'm hearing is like we got skateboarding punks who hung out at mcdonald's like you guys would be good at the gym come on in and like he, he like that's really really awesome and probably really rare that he had the insight to say man i don't need a nutrition snob or a um or somebody who, who's been a gym rat their entire life i need someone who's got the right heart and the right personality who cares about the, about people, right? And like it, it blossomed from there. Were you guys even interested in lifting and working out at all at that point? Or is so it just- we had, we, had, we had done athletics our entire life. And so we were very familiar with working out. He had trained us when we were like 12, 14 years old. Now fast forward, we're like 19 years old. Um, right. So, you know, we're gym rats at the high school gym. And so we were into it, but okay. you know, standard traditional old school stuff, bench press, shoulder press, uh, you know, deadlift. Right, 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 right. That's good stuff. All right, so what- what's happening in your business today? Like you guys, you're we we've been talking a little bit. And if you guys, I've got Matt and Chris here, a lot of new people are jumping on. I've got the comments pulled up right here. Throw your comments down. If you have questions for them, throw them in the comments and we'll ask them at the end. Um, and we'll get, we'll get some stuff coming through. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. We got quite a few of you guys, but um, Matt and Chris, since we've talked, what's been going on from a, you know, February, March, April, all the way through here, like currently in your business. Cause I know you're at a place right now where you're transitioning and you're, you're taking over for your uncle and figuring that piece out um, along while that's happening. That's hard enough, right? What's right. been going, what's going on? Yeah. So for the last two years, we've been working on a business plan with our uncle to sort of partner up with him. So we can be a three-way partnership in owning the business, uh, us owning our end of the training department, um, clients, trainers, and all of that jazz. Um, and leading up to that, we were supposed to close on that April 1st. And right. It turns out that our gym was shut down on March 23rd by our state representative uh, and the government. Yeah. So, so the business we were buying into essentially did not exist from March 23rd on. <laughs> wow. So at that point, did you guys have any online training going on? Did you do anything virtually? Did you have any kind of like f following or anything like that online? So we immediately jumped on Facebook and started a group for our people and said, Hey man, if, if we're gonna, if we're not going to be in house, we've got to bring them content. We've got to give them something. We want to try to save memberships. Cause at that point we had no plan. We just were getting information hour by hour. So we jumped on a Facebook group, started inviting our, our team training clients. Um, and we kind of went down that route, letting them know, here's where you're going to get all your information from us. That's good. So you didn't really have that beforehand. So you're kind of like behind in like that kind of like momentum, like that started basically the 23rd, right? We to did get... that, that day. As soon as we got the announcement, we literally walked into our office and sat down and we said, what can we do to keep this, to keep this place alive? Like, okay, if we can't be here as of tomorrow, we can be here. So we set up this private group and we just started sending the invitations out to like tell people, Hey, 
we know you just heard from the governor they're shutting us down but we're still here like yeah right here so that started getting the ball rolling a little bit we did a nice little video right we shot that little introductory video where we sat down and we were like guys we just got the word that we're shut down join us here for the next couple of weeks until we can open up and that's so you've got how many members um, that need to transfer from not being with you online at all? Like you're, you're relying on seeing them face to face purely. Uh, maybe they follow your Facebook page, but not a group to nothing. And now we got to get everybody into this group and figure something out. Right. So how many people was that? And how did that transition work? So we have everywhere from 90 year old clients down to teenage clients. And so we're trying to get through this technology to the older community. And there's a drawback and a challenge that we're facing and, and getting that group. So, I mean, we have upwards of 800 gym members that mm -hmm. come and go on a regular basis. We have, uh, you know, probably one third of that that will train with us in small groups, one on one and team training. And that's wow. what we really wanted to target, too, because those are the people that need our help and, and, and have asked for our help. So we wanted that's to a, make sure we could bring it to them. That's a big percentage of members that do training. That's that's really neat. Um, that's cool. So um, what's happened since you got that Facebook group? You told me what's going on. We've been working a little bit. Talk, tell, tell everybody about what you've been doing and how that's how that's like grown for you and what's yeah. happened. So it, it essentially started as somebody saying to us, hey, there's this cool app called Zoom. You can you can do workouts with it. And so we started to just kind of play with the Zoom app and learn about workouts, invite people to them. And so we started building like two or three classes a week and just telling people to come on in. And so it was kind of a trickle down effect, word of mouth of them telling somebody, them telling somebody, and then us being able to post about it in the group to get people to come on and see that it's not so bad. And, and this, there actually is potential here to get a great workout. Right, man. So you got, there's one part I, I you told me about a while back and I want to make sure people understand this. You guys, or like as soon as the, they shut down, a lot of gyms were charging memberships continually trying to figure things out. And you guys didn't want to, you didn't feel comfortable doing that. What happened yeah. there? So, so we found out we had to close the doors, put a sign on the door and lock the door and, and kind of threw our hands up. Like, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. um, and we weren't sure when we could reopen. So uh, originally we're going to be able to reopen April 3rd. So we're talking like two weeks shutdown. And so we're thinking, okay, we don't, we shouldn't maybe go ahead and, and not charge everybody. We had some people calling us up saying, Hey, I want to make sure my dues get paid. I want to, I want the club to be there. But of course that wasn't everybody. I mean, we had tears in our eyes taking these phone calls because at the other end of that was the, you know, 50, 60 phone calls a day saying, stop my membership, stop my membership. Sure. And that was even before we were forced to shut down just because of the hysteria people yeah. were getting nervous about going to begin with. Right. Um, and rightly so, I guess, you know, that's, that's big. For sure. Uh, so what did you guys do? When, when, when did you start it? Just, just before April 1st, which would have been our bill date, uh, my uncle decided that he was going to go on Facebook Live and tell everybody that he wasn't going to charge them on April 1st, um, you know, yeah. which, which got through to some people. Some people still didn't even get that message. So they, they either assumed they were getting charged or assumed that they weren't. Yeah, man. That's crazy. That's a lot sooner. I know a lot of clubs are in trouble because they didn't turn off any automated paying uh, payments. People weren't coming. Yeah. So we're tight. People don't like, why are you charging me for something? I don't want, I don't need, I, I can't pay right now. Like, so I think you guys are out in front of that, which is a neat thing. So you might behind it on having a following on social media, but out in front of taking care of your people, which is, I think is a really special thing saying, we're going to make sure that we do the right thing from the get go. And if we can't yeah, serve you, we're not going to charge you. There was a franchise club in Boston that stopped answering their phones, kept charging people and wouldn't respond back. And I think they were under a class section lawsuit. So I, I'm not sure how that, how that panned out. Wow. That is, um, that's not fun. That's not where you want to be. So moving forward from there, how'd you get this back up and running? Cause now we're back charging people again. We're back, we're, we're working out, we're doing zoom workouts. Like, um, it, it, did it start right away? Hey, we're charging or like, what, what was the process like from there? No, it, that's a great question because we, we, we just started throwing the classes up and doing what we love to do. You know, as trainers, we want to train. And we weren't sure how we go about charging for that. And, and then we obviously can't do it just the two of us. So we, we are fortunate enough to have a really good group of trainers that we work with. So yeah. we reached out to them. We said, guys, listen, this is what we're thinking. We want to get a good group of classes together that we can offer them in a nice, nice looking schedule. 
so that they can see that, that, that there's plenty of options out there for them to get involved, plenty of different workouts between stretching classes, conditioning classes, strength-based classes, CrossFit-like classes, a little bit of something for everybody. We even have silver sneakers programs for our, our 55, 65 plus community. Wow. Um, and, and, and the coaches were a huge help in that because they That's stepped awesome. up to the plate. And if you think about it, you know, if all, if every coach teaches one class a week, you could throw a schedule of 10 classes a week out there and we're all doing a, a minimal amount of work so we can put our most effort into it and provide a really good service. So then it comes into how do we sell that? Right. So, so yeah. how do we, how do we get people to pay for that? And I think, I think the, the biggest thing that really helped us, Ryan, was, you know, inviting people to either pay as they go per class. Um, and if you can't afford it, don't pay anything at all or pay whatever you think you can afford, because we just want to really help as many people as we can. And most of our members were pretty eager to, to go ahead and pay. And they just said, you know, can we just pay for the month? Can we pay for the week? And, and it was a pretty easy lead in at that point because they want to pay. They want to yep. feel like they're, they're being, you know, a part of the community. And so it, were, it, it was, I think that, that pay per class, but, but not necessarily forcing anybody to pay. Cause we do understand that not everybody can afford it at this time. Sure, so sure. I think that was huge. That's big. Um, I, 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 that's about where we started talking together right there when it was like that transition of like, finding a way to take care of people and, and balancing that with, but we still need to take care of our, our trainers and our business and make sure that moves forward somehow too. So that's a delicate balance. And that's something you guys really walked really well. I think it's really, that's yeah. really neat. We owe a lot of that to you for helping us out for designing what that's going to look like and then how to present that. Absolutely. You guys, you guys have done a good job with it. It's really, it's really awesome to see. Um, I think we, you guys, when did you turn it on? Like when did you say, okay, we're done mm -hmm. with like free classes we're going to go to what's the next, like, how did, when did that day start and, and how did that like trickle in? How did that work? Did everybody buy in right away? Or is it like slowly? Tell everybody how that, how that looks. So we're slowly starting to rebuild our membership base as, as we're, as we're learning about all the technology, what apps we're using to collect payments, how those payments are going to get transferred into our accounts uh, and then how we're going to track who's paying and at what point, because now it's not a April 1st membership dues come through. It's, some people are paying in the middle of the month. Some people paid today. Some people paid yesterday. Um, and what are they paying for? So there's a lot on the end of tracking it, making sure that we're holding them accountable. We want to yeah. know. We want to know uh, what they need from us. So, do are they committed for a week? Are they committed for a month? Are they just dropping in? What's um well, maybe Chris, you can answer this. What's been the biggest like breakthrough as far as online training? Do your do your clients, do your members feel like? well, we're just putting up with it until we get back to the gym or is this something they feel like they're getting a really good workout in? Is it like, what's, what's the feedback been when you guys are we're doing these classes? Is it obviously not everybody has the same equipment or not everybody has a lot of equipment. They might have a band or a kettlebell or a dumbbell at home, but um, to, to reach 800 people or 300 people that are doing your small groups or however that looks, um, how, how do you, how do you see that working and do people like it or is it just something they're putting up with? What do you think? Yeah, so that's a really um, that's a really great question, Ryan. Um, so first off, technology and, and the internet plays a huge part in this. When the internet's working great, it works really, really well. People <laughs> get really frustrated when we get, you know, uh, sort of interrupted or freezed or you know the internet's splotchy. So as long as that's going smoothly, things are going good. Um, but that aside, assuming everything's going well, most people are skeptical to get involved. It's kind of something that they don't really necessarily can't wrap their head around. They're nervous. They're scared. Um, right. the people that are getting involved uh, generally keep coming back. I think it's pretty safe to say now. Speaking of internet freeze, you just, we just had a freeze there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. I mean, it, gets, it happens to everybody. We understand it, you know? So, where, do we, where do we leave off? Uh, people that are getting involved, they're skeptical, but the ones that come keep coming back. Right. So the people that are coming, uh, the question is, is it, is it uh, something they're just putting up with? Um, I, I would say no. I think uh, it's something that they would be willing to stick with a little while longer, especially if they know it's going to keep them at home and keep them safe. Yeah. So if they feel like they're doing something good for themselves. Uh, they definitely love the community. Seeing the, the biggest thing we always hear is how great it is to see everyone's faces. That's mm -hmm. like a hands down thing isolation is just bad for the mind it's bad for the body 
And the more we can stay connected, I think people, once we get them through that barrier, once we get them through that barrier, and I'll tell you what, Ryan, you really like, like you kind of made mention to us, you encourage us to reach out to them individually. And I think that's huge because when you individually invite them in and then you actually, I've actually had to go on. I just went on with a lady today who was like, I'm so nervous to come to the four o'clock wad tonight. I don't know zoom. I said, listen, just download the app. I literally FaceTimed her and I said, go on right now. I walked her through it. And now she's excited to get on. She's like, that's awesome. So it, it takes time. It takes work. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. if you have 300 members that you have to do that with, but at the end of the day, they're going to give you money because you took that time. So it's, 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 that's right. So what's the, it takes time, takes work. What's the workload been like these last two and a half, three, two, two and a half weeks, getting this up and running to where we completely revamped our business and made it like something we've never done before. Right. What's that been like? Are you exhausted or has it been pretty easy? We've been working harder than we've ever worked. First of all, <laughs> for trainers, we're not tech junkies. So even right. just like flipping open my 10 year old MacBook and trying to get these apps <laughs> downloaded has been a challenge. So one step at a time. And like I said, working harder than we've ever worked before. That's awesome. but, but two options, work harder than you've ever worked or stop working and throw Don't your hands. Yeah. That's not an option. So that's big, man. That's really cool. All right. So uh, last couple of questions here and then anything you guys want to leave us with uh, before we get to the end, Anybody that's hopping on right now that wants to know more um, about from Matt or Chris, throw your questions in the comments. I'll ask them. And I know we got people jumping in and out and we're talking here, but other part of that, since you guys are online right now um, and anybody could be watching this or listening to this later on, what, where, what's your gym? How do they get in touch with you? If say, I want to try these guys' workouts out. They seem like they're good guys. They seem like they take care of people. Uh, you know, my gym isn't that great. And now is a time that I could join any gym. So why not them? Where, how would they get a hold of you guys? Yeah, so our, our, our home division is Central Massachusetts. So you can find us at fitconcepts.net. Um, you can find us on Facebook. You can, my name on Facebook, and you can personally message me as well. Um, but fitconcepts.net is our home. Concepts. It's fitconcepts.net. And <laughs> it's fitnessconceptshealthclub.com and it's fitconcepts.net. So we've had two different domains throughout the 16, year, 16 years we've been in business. It's, uh, it's definitely a blessing. That's awesome, guys. I'm putting that in the comments right now for anybody that wants it on Facebook here, fitconcepts.net. And Matt Kelly, Chris Kelly, friend them. They'll talk to you. They're good guys. And you can get in with them. All right, so last thing. Maybe maybe we've already talked about this, but what's the biggest personal struggle you've had in your business? It, through all, maybe it's through all this, or is there is there something that's been harder that set you up so you can actually conquer this really well? What's uh, What's been your experience? Oh man, that's a good question. The big, biggest struggle that we've had, um, well, first is the virtual world. And, and now I think the biggest struggle is how can we make this part of what we do on an everyday basis and make mm -hmm. it flow? So now we're facing a whole new challenge uh, and looking forward to that is this is something we can carry on with us and offer to our members so that when they're on vacation, when they're um, away at work or whatever the case is, they can, they find no excuse not to be with us. That's awesome. That's a good, I like that. I like that thought. Um, anything to add to that, Chris, that you agree? No, I, I think one of the biggest challenges we've honestly faced in our sp specific area is getting our name out to people. A lot of people think we're planet fitness. They, they think we're the community college health club and it's, it's been difficult trying to differentiate ourselves, like make it known what it is we do and who it is we serve it. Like every gym is not just a gym, right? You got a, a very specific thing you guys do. And that's, yeah. it's, it's hard sometimes to clarify that because people have this preconceived notion of, Oh, you're like my gym coach who used to yell and scream at me, or you're that quiet little gym that no one's going to bother me. Like there's like, what, how do you get that through into their mind? That's a tough, that's a tough thing to work out. I, I like that. That's a great thing to be aware of. Um, so that might lead right into our last question here. What's the biggest need you have right now moving forward? Uh, man, the biggest need we have is to be in contact with all of our members. Uh, uh, that retention is so important and to get all of them back. Because like I said, we're dealing with up to 90 year old clients that we need to bring back who, who aren't going to do it on a virtual platform at this point. Um, so when we re when we are able to open our doors, how many clients are we going to have and how, and what does that look like? So we are, we are anticipating that we need, we have some work ahead of us to make sure that we show them that we care. Yeah. And, and this transition where you guys take on a bigger responsibility in the business and a bigger uh, reward with the business too, but like, that's going to be huge. Um, taking care of that many people. It's, it's a big, it's a big, big deal. 
Um, guys, any last thoughts before we hop off here? Anything for everybody that you want to leave with them? No, I think it's been really, really great working with you for the last couple of weeks and, and some of the ideas that you bring to the table to help us better serve our members. Um, I, I think it's been huge. And I know my brother will agree with me uh, because to deliver the best product and, and, and keep people moving well and keep people smiling while they're doing it is yeah. tough. And uh, I, think, I think it's been really, really helpful to, to have some, some of your input and advice it's definitely steered us in the right direction to offer a better product to our people and keep them motivated in what's probably one of the most depressing times of our lives. Right, man. Well, golly guys, I appreciate that. And you guys work, I mean, you, you, you work hard, you're grinding literally harder than anybody I know right now. So that, that's just a testament to how much you care about your people and how much you care about your business and, and how well, I mean, I don't know two brothers that could run a business together, much, much less run a business together that they've never done before. Essentially, it's a brand new business right now in a lot of ways and still have time or patience to get on a call and agree with each other and talk with each other. That's, that shows a lot. I think that just shows a lot about who you guys are. That's really cool. Um, so, hey, we're done here, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us, Matt and Chris. Guys out there, uh, if you're listening to this and you want to get a message to Matt or Chris, you can message me if you're not friends with them and I'll get your contact to them. And um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Guys, train smart, live well, and we... We'll see you soon.